Hey, get the book at thugnosebook.com. What's good, my well-read ballers? This week we remembering don't hate the player, hate the game. We'll end this game by Orson Scott Carr. It's the future. And you best believe them humans got their intergalactic travel game clutch status. Only problem is a crew of nasty aliens called buggers who've been tussling over turf with humans for way too long. Humanity ain't got the numbers they got, so they all tweaking that the next time they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the buggers, it'll be their last. So to get the jump on them creepers, the military hit the streets looking for special genius kids to take their military strategy game next level. The book followed the military's best hope, six-year-old Andrew Wiggin, or Ender to his boys. Brother may be a little G, but he is wicked smart. So when some punk-ass bitch named Stilson roll up with his gang trying to throw down, Ender makes sure that fool never come tripping to his face again. He actually kills Stilson, even though at the time, he didn't know he jacked him up so raw. Good thing, too, because at the core, Ender is a sensitive little homie with a heart of gold. Back at home, Ender always getting picked on by his violent ass 10 year old bro, Peter. Ender's eight year old sister, Valentine, though, is way more chill and she stick up for Ender on the red. When word comes out that little Ender knows how to bang out like a champ, Colonel named Graf drop by and invite his ass to battle school, where he gonna learn to fight the buggers. Peter pissed as hell that Ender got chosen instead of him. Up at battle school, it don't take long for everybody to realize that Ender, the smartest hood up in there for sure. And cause of that, Graf actually trying to keep Ender from making legit friends. Cause he think the only way Ender can get to the top of his game is if he flying solo. When he ain't wrecking shop in the battle room and training other kids, Ender plays the mind game, a computer program that analyzes kids' psychology. None of them kids can get past a part of the game called the Giants game, where a brother gotta pick between two cups of drink, one of which gonna kill him. After Ender gets murked by that killer scissor for the millionth time, he straps up again. Instead of sipping, he knocks over that juice and burrows a damn hole in the Giants' eye. Damn! Thing is, Ender can't stand doing shit like that, cause it remind him of his brother Peter. Dude even say, this was supposed to be a game. I'm a murderer, even when I play. Ender gets promoted in and transferred to armies left and right, and eventually calling the shots as a commander of his own army. Along the way, Ender making all kinds of enemies who jealous of his mad gangster skills. When one of his haters, some boy named Bonso, who way older and bigger than Ender, tries to boot up in the shower, Ender do what he always do. He make damn sure that Bonso ain't ever gonna try and scrap with him again. Ender ices that fool too, but just like last time, he don't even know it till later. 10 years old now, Ender real tired of all this teacher sh at the battle school. Every time he get close to somebody or shows that he got the game sold up, the rules change on him. And Ender goes back to grinding all day, every day. Eventually, Ender has had it and want to just piece the f out. So Grab takes Ender back to Earth so that Valentine can give him a pep talk. While Ender been whooping ass in space, Valentine and Pete have been busy too. See, it turns out that Val and Pete got brains just as big as Ender. The only reason they didn't get picked by Graf is cause Val too nice. And Pete are too insane in the membrane. Always killing sh Even though they just little kids, Pete and Val know that people all over the world ain't just ready for war with the buggers. Nah, blood, they also gonna beef with each other. Val and Pete realize that humanity ain't gonna last unless somebody with brains running the show. So they get up on that futuristic Facebook and start getting mad street cred talking politics. Ender finally gets his together, but don't go back to the battle school. The military decide the clock is ticking with the buggers, so they send his ass to command school, even though he ain't even close to 16 yet. There, Ender meet a dude with some major swagger, Rackham, the OG general that whipped the buggers back in the day. After some choice words from the big dog, Ender goes into a new simulator where he commanded a posse of his own. For days, Ender fights battle after battle. Some of them seem as straight up impossible, but in the end, Ender keeps it real and always finishes number one, even destroying the entire bugger planet. Everyone on the base all geeked at the win, 
And Rackham tell Ender, that wasn't no simulation, bro. You just killed all the buggers for real. Oh, no, you didn't. Ender feeling so shitty for committing genocide that he passes the fuck out. Going in and out of consciousness while humanity go and make an ass of itself. Right after taking care of the buggers, peeps worldwide are at each other's throats. Come on, for real? But guess who came out on top? Peter, Ender's brother. Scary ass family, man. Hella scary. When everyone realized Ender too dangerous to allow back on Earth, E-Dog and Valentine throw up deuces and start helping colonize empty bugger worlds. Along the way, Ender actually finds the pupil of a queen bugger, ready to hatch a hundred thousand little buggers. Turns out, the bugger's been reading his mind for years. So does he smoke that hoe? Nah, -uh, player. Ender better than that. He and Valentine snatch her up and keep on cruising, hoping to find a place where the Hive Queen can set up shop in peace. This book right here might be called Ender's Game, but Ender show as hell ain't playing. Him, Peter, and Valentine got fat brains that make them some real badasses. Their swole abilities in line with one of the dankest themes of the book, the power to understand others. Peter digs up people's fears and uses it against them. Valentine figures out what people love about themselves and flatters them. And Ender got the ability to look deep into somebody and think like them. Card actually waving that symbol in our faces on page 11, where we got Ender trying on a bugger mask and wondering what buggers think about humans. For Ender, this power is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, he able to use it to smack up his enemies like a G. Like Ender say, every time I've won because I can understand the way my enemy thought. From what they did, I can tell what they thought I was doing, how they wanted the battle to take shape. Ain't all gravy though. Every time Ender mops the flow with somebody, he kills a little piece of himself. In the moment, when I truly understand my enemy, understand him well enough to defeat him, then in that very moment, I also love him. And then, in that very moment when I love them, I destroy them. I make it impossible for them to ever hurt me again. So when Ender learned that he wiped out a whole colony, you best believe that messed him up. And speaking of messed up, that mind game is all kind of whack. Or at least what it shows us is, not only does the mind game bring together the theme of Ender's guilt and games, but it also repping that ain't nothing gonna stop Ender from doing what he gotta do. And in Ender's case, we see over and over that in order for him to become top dog, he gotta straight up kill children. Ugh. Not only does Ender kill kids in the mind game and also outside it, Stilson, Bonso, and even his own childhood, not to mention a million little bugger kids, through the giants drink again, past the wolf children reliving the terrible deaths, the constant murders, he heard a voice whispering in the forest, you had to kill the children to get to the end of the world. So can we blame Ender for being a killing machine? Or do Graf, Rackham, and all the other peeps that made Ender what he is have to ride the beef? Show at the end of the book, the court finds Ender not guilty for Bonso and Stilson's death, saying he acted in self-defense. But don't forget what Rackham say to Ender about the buggers. Don't start apologizing for them, Ender. Just because they didn't know they were killing human beings doesn't mean they weren't killing human beings. I guess that Ender thought like the buggers even more than he could have imagined. Hey, thanks for keeping it real with me today. Peace. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. A great way you can help us make more thug notes is by supporting our sponsors. This week is Audible. Audible.com is gonna give you a free audio book just for being a fan of the show. You heard me, free. Go to audible.com slash thug notes. And if you're looking for a recommendation, we suggest the book this episode was about, Ender's Game. You heard the summary and analysis, now go hear the book for yourself. Peace.